Yeah, so Dr. Don Huber is, or Don M. Huber, Huber I should say, um, is in, uh, Professor Emeritus from Purdue University. And Dr. Huber had a very distinguished record of, um, of, of science in the area of um, plant mineral nutrition and pathology. Um, and there's no question about that. But over the last few years, he's gone on this kind of tour, um, speaking against the use of glyphosate and GM technology. As part of his um, campaign, he incorporates a lot of misrepresentation of real science and a lot of really uh, uh, flawed thinking of his own. It's really kind of sad because he had such a great career. But the worst thing that he's done, starting back in 2005, eight years ago, is talk about the emergence of this new kind of pathogen. It's not quite a virus, not quite a fungus. It can only be seen on electromicrographs. But he says that it uh, is caused by glyphosate and spread by GM crops. It uh, causes death in cattle, um, abortions in cattle, a list of problems in humans such as autism, um, arthritis, asthma, allergies, you name it, it causes it in humans. He'll show you the list in his talks. And it also causes um, plants to get sick and, and die. So here's a pathogen that he claims is harming animals, harming people, harming plants. I had the pleasure of watching one of his talks recently in Gainesville, Florida, and watched his entire presentation and didn't say a word. After he was done, I asked him one question. And, and since you have cultured this organism, this mystery organism, and you've had it for eight years and you haven't published it, would you be willing to release it to the wider scientific community? And could I get this from you so that I could sequence the genome which we can do at University of Florida. I could have it done in, in you know, by, by the new year and have it done in a few weeks. Um, would you release it to us for sequencing? And we will share all the information with anyone who wants it. We'll keep it all open source. We'll do it all in as way that you want, but we'll, we'll make it open and we'll figure out what this pathogen really is. After 15 minutes of going back and forth about how I couldn't sequence it because maybe it doesn't even have DNA, it's probably a prion, it may not have DNA, you, I could sequence the RNA, the DNA, I could sequence it myself, I, I mean I could uh, culture it myself, he said. Uh, he went on and on about this and uh, at the end said no, he wouldn't share it. He's got this incredible emergency critical pathogen that has all these ramifications for human and animal health, yet he's not willing to release it to the wider scientific community. Um, I think that says a lot. I know he doesn't have such an organism, but I really wish that people would call him out a little bit more often. You know, well, if, if somebody really stumbled upon a new type of pathogen, which happens all the time because we see this emerging pathogens all throughout uh, uh, biology, uh, the best thing to do is to immediately study it as far as you can within your expertise and find collaborators to work with you. Find the best people who can take it apart on all the different levels to try immediately to culture it, to understand it, to sequence the genome, to understand its physiology, to understand its, 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 the mechanisms by which it becomes pathogenic and which it's vectored. Um, this only happens with collaboration. When such things are found, scientists get hot on this and they work together to solve the problem. Thank you.